we are stepping forward together as political leaders to overcome the current crisis and set the country on a new path. On a new path. This agreement is designed to create an environment conducive to such a partnership and to build mutual trust and confidence. We have agreed to enact the National Court and Reconciliation Act, end of the court, signed by the two leaders. Following the passage of the Kenya Constitution Review Act 208, Kenya Constitution Amendment Act 208 by Parliament, the process of drafting a new constitution detailed in Agenda 4 began. Two years later, and through a people-driven national dialogue, the Constitution of Kenya 2010 was finally promulgated to widespread acclaim at home, regionally and internationally. Even though this living document is acknowledged as one of Africa's most progressive constitutions, there are still some aspects of its composition that in its 13th year of existence require serious deliberation. We in the Azimio La Umoja One Kenya Coalition hold the view that we cannot transform our beloved nation if we do not fundamentally address those Agenda 4 uh, issues of 2008 and those concerns that we have outlined in the National Dialogue Committee, which have christened NADCO, and, and which I'm uh, happily, oh, yes, as fate would have it, a co-chair. Our top priority, which was to address the cost of living, is demonstrated by the growing gaps in poverty and inequality brought about by harsh and burdensome taxes that take money out of people's pockets rather than putting it therein. And Susan, you're in the business trying to get people to put their money in the pockets. You haven't quite succeeded. Because this is where the issue is. Kenyans are crying, heavy burden of taxation. I have never seen a nation anywhere in the world which can develop on the basis of overtaxing its citizens, particularly, <laughs> particularly during such economic reality. And if anybody has one example in the world, yeah, we talked of the Marshall Plan and others, where you overtax your citizen in order to get out of depression, I will be happily able to listen to you. Despite the conflicting uh, explanations, the primary causes of economic slow growth, indeed depression, are not solely attributable to global events, but rather economic mismanagement and endemic corruption. The last three presidential election results are strongly disputed, indicating that we have not addressed transparency, accountability, and impunity, particularly regarding our electoral management process. That is why we in Azimio La Umoja One Kenya Alliance Coalition insisted upon not only audit of 2022 general election, but a reconstitution of the Independent Electoral Boundaries Commission. We too in this NADCO process spoke to the deepening of our political gains by ensuring there will be fidelity to the Constitution as regards, as regards interference with political parties. The story that has been going on, Mary go around in Jubilee, I'm a very key member of Azimio La Moja, <laughs> One Kenya Coalition. It's, it's disturbing. We have had to call a spade a spade. In these talks, we are not sparing any situation. And we are saying it is improper to disorganize Jubilee. Because by disorganizing Jubilee, you are trying to disorganize Azimio. And by implication, paying lip service to multi-party democracy. And this is our view. Our agenda items are the bipartisan talks at Bombers of Kenya, also included addressing the imbalance of public office appointments that are biased towards specific communities and poorly represented the aspirations of two gender rule. This, we strongly argued, continue to undermine the ideas of national cohesion and unity. I would want, for example, very honest, very honest conversation about the recently concluded recruitment at the Kenya Defense Forces. Mukwanja and the rest of you in parliament, please, if you want to heal this country, and I heard the president yesterday say, 
80% of uh, recruitment to KDF now will be from National Youth Service. But before we get there, we want the statistics, ethnic balance. By the way, it's a matter in the Constitution. We want to know <laughs> of the 42, 43 communities, what percentage did the people in Embu in Manyata get? And you will be amazed. And when I go to the conflict in, the, in Rwanda after the genocide, in fact, the problem in Rwanda and Burundi is basically this. 84% of the population are Hutus in both countries and 14% are Tutsis in both countries. At some stage, the whole leadership of Burundi from the president to deputy speaker were eliminated because they went through uh, a hugely successful election where if it is the majority must have their way, and the minority have their say, that happened. But people were hurting. And, and what happened? Killings. Uh, so, in my view, if you disturb the army, if you do not have a professional military in Kenya, or anywhere in the region, ladies and gentlemen, you do not have a country. Please, you can take that one to the bank even if it is a hustler bank. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot disturb if you, if you, if you, and the reason our military men and women have done very well in terms of peacekeeping everywhere, right, is because we have had a professional army. But if we have a tribalized army, and I still insist, I want you guys, if, if the, ne the parliament, I'm told when, when you people in Kenya Kwanza went to State House and complained to President Ruto that Amwes Gwenda Nyumbani wanainjwa na pigia kelele because of taxation, he looked at you and told you, but you are the ones in parliament. Nyinyi ndi umepitisha the Finance Act. <laughs> so you, you, you now have to play your role. If you're going to do oversight, uh, oversighting of this government, and, and I like the young, the young uh, parliamentarians. Actually, went in at 30, and uh, I remained there. Yes, I think uh, I should have been a member. Now, uh, I'll, I'll give you, I'll do the, the mentoring that uh, our wonderful Mwishma was talking about. I must conclude, ladies and gentlemen, before I invite our brother to come and make his remarks and close this, this consultative uh, session. Um, you know, we went to um, we went to bombers because Kenyans lost their lives. Kenyans, some of them wearing sufurias. Right? Let's not forget. Let's not forget we buried nearly seventy people. Let's not forget a lot of them had their households and everything they owned destroyed. And even as recent as two weeks ago. 25,000 people in Mavoko had what they call their homes destroyed. And, and we hear you friends in Kenya Kwanza telling us affordable housing. What the fellows have put together what they could afford and you destroy it, you destroy it, and you are telling them affordable housing? So, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot hope to transform our nation, indeed any nation, without meaningful dialogue. And that is built on mutual trust and confidence. Nonetheless, I've observed that during our 73 days, we've already done 73 days of the national dialogue, good view has occurred, and both sides have learned to respect one another's points of view. Therefore, I must congratulate my friend, my co-chair, Kemani Chungwa, when he came in, I told Kimani, I looked at him, I said, listen, you are young, I think you are very young, and the future is ahead of you. Me, I can go back to Sekuru, right, and forget about you guys. But if you don't succeed at these talks, history will judge you badly. And we must therefore confront the truth, the truth, and nothing but the truth. Our forefathers, the likes of Mzejomo Kenyatta and Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, we were able to negotiate and compromise even with the British colonialists. When, when the Jaramogi Oginga Odinga said, without Jomo Kenyatta, there will be no freedom. Now, we should emulate them. 26 years ago, the late President Daniel Arab Moyes ruling party Kano 
By the way, I was Kanu was organizing secretary for 12 good years. Eh. I was elected uh, national organizing secretary the same day with the late Moses Mundamba Modavadi, Wycliffe's father. So you can see if Modavadi is beginning to look old. <laughs> He, I was. I started it with his old, late father. That is a beauty when you are young. You see it all. And I therefore can pass this information, this wisdom, sometimes lack of it, depending on how you look at it, to the younger leaders. Mzemui then was able to accommodate dialogue. After the violence that followed two or seven elections and almost tore our nation apart, Mzee Kibaki, our brother Raila, and indeed myself, with our respective coalitions, were able to come together and work on creating a durable new constitution. Our history is replete with examples of transformative national dialogue for the betterment of all Kenyans. We at Azumio La Moja One Kenya Alliance Coalition remain optimistic that these bipartisan talks, we should conclude with a report handed to both uh, my friend William Ruto and my brother here uh, on November 22nd. We are very clear. We don't want to stay there for longer than is necessary. And some of them say we are paid huge sums of money. I've not seen a cent. I'm giving my time and my everything to my country so that these things can succeed. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my great pleasure to invite my brother and actually a soulmate, <laughs> the Right Honorable Raila Amolo Dinga, to come make 